It's Anna Nex from the Northwestern News Network, where we give you your news faster than you can eat a bowl of mac and cheese. I'm Aria Wozniak. And I'm Naya Reyes. Let's get right into tonight's top stories. Students for Justice in Palestine holding a rally last week where students added their handprints to the rock in solidarity with Palestine. The demonstration coming after SJP painted the rock during MLK weekend, only for it to be covered in purple paint with the word Israel and a Star of David one week later. NNN's Luis Castaneda explains to us what we've learned about the situation. While an official representative for SJP declined NNN's request for comment, dozens showed up to the rally and painting, even in the rain. Organizers honored the growing number of Palestinians killed in Gaza and called for the university to divest from companies supporting the Israeli forces. Luis Castaneda, Northwestern News Network. Students have used the rock as a sign of protest before. A pair of fires causing damage to Evanston businesses over the last few days. On Sunday night, it took firefighters over four hours to get this blaze under control at the corner of Greenleaf Street and Wesley Avenue. Multiple businesses were destroyed, including two pottery shops and a photography studio. The cause of the fire is under investigation, but thankfully, EFD says the building was empty at the time and no one was injured. Still, the fire, which started just after 8.30, drawing a crowd of residents, including Jennifer Tracy. She says she heard the alarms as she was walking outside to put out her trash. It's a mess. It looks to be that it was a pottery studio and it's up in flames. They get it under control and then it start, the flames start shooting up again. Uh, there is Winnetka here, Glencoe, Northfield, Park Ridge, and obviously Evanston fire trucks as well. The three alarm fire coming just days after EFD responded to smoke at the locker room, which sells Northwestern apparel across from Ryan Field. David Hugnaji owns the store, which also has a location in downtown Evanston called Campus Gear. He says he was out of the country when the fire ignited, and while he hasn't been inside yet to assess the damage, he believes it's extensive. It's devastating and, uh, you know, like, I never had some experience like this. We had received a lot of shipments that we restocked uh, over December. And unfortunately, it has, uh, everything went on flames. A little over a week ago, two firefighters were injured at a home fire on Florence Avenue. Both have since been released from the hospital. Getting to school in the morning could look a lot different in the near future for local families. Naya reported the story. Can you explain the program to us? Of course. So federal grants will be given out to companies and school districts across the Midwest. Evanston School District and Skokie School District, District 65, will have enough money to purchase six electric new school buses. Okay, and when can families of District 65 start seeing electric school buses on the routes? Important question. So the money's actually going to come in April 1st of this year, so it'll be here before we know it. And then the school district will actually have somewhere between two to three years to use that money to buy the buses and then, of course, put that infrastructure like charging stations in place. And then, of course, the last step and the best part, putting those buses on the roads for kids. Thank you, Naya. For more on the local future of electric buses, reach out to District 65. Contact information can be found at district65.net. Saturday marked International Holocaust Remembrance Day. While there are no set practices to observe the January 27th Remembrance Day, many spend the time reflecting and remembering the victims of the Holocaust. So I'll just think about the women who were there and, uh, um, and just yeah, spend, a, spend some time thinking about uh, um, you know, what we can what we can learn and understand about from history, from their experiences. Northwestern's Holocaust Educational Foundation will be hosting an inaugural winter lecture tomorrow on a French Holocaust film. Information on the lecture can be found on their website. Dry January is a challenge encouraging people to stay sober for the month. Sobriety is a wider trend among young people. According to a Gallup poll, less than 38 percent of young adults in the U.S. are regular drinkers. That's an 11% decrease from trends in the early 2000s. It just allows people to live more in the moment and also remember um, more about like their times with their friends and like enjoy themselves rather than how they feel on substances. Social events centered around alcohol can be uncomfortable for non-drinkers. Increasingly popular mocktails and yeah. non-alcoholic spirits um. offer a discreet alternative to classic cocktails. Even with dry January coming to an end, sobriety seems likely to stay. 
Northwestern's Dolphin Show producers transformed Fist Call into a royally fantastic drag performance last Wednesday. NNN's Ananya Chug went out to check out how these queens shine on stage. Performers in the Kinky Cats drag show did more than just promote the Dolphin Show's kinky boots. What led me here specifically was just like, I haven't tried drag on myself before, but I finally had experience doing it on other people. So I just wanted the ability to like try it for the first time on myself and show the world like what I can do. Love her. Love her so Tiger Lee, or Tigress as they're known on stage, says that drag seemed only natural for them. And I was one of those people that stole makeup from their mom, you know, was always putting on my face. Um, and door locked, obviously. Lee is one of over five student drag performers that took the stage in Fisk Hall as a part of a dolphin show tradition. And once COVID hit, it never kind of got into full swing. And the producers and I definitely this year wanted to reignite that tradition. Performers dressing up as fiery female figures like Ariana Grande. Yeah. And Princess Diana. So this one is Lady Diana. And it's her wedding dress with a long train, and it's gonna have sleeves that like, rip off at the beginning when she decides she doesn't want to marry him. Chicago based professional drag queen Chonel hosted the event, exciting the crowd with sparkling sequins and bedazzled booties. With the queens' as friends and loved ones showing support in the audience as they build community together. A community at Northwestern is definitely something that you have to find, but once you find it, you feel so at home. I've definitely found support in my friends and peers, especially the ones that do theater. And even doing this show, I found other people that like, like drag like me. Providing an outlet for self-expression in Northwestern's growing LGBTQ plus community. Ananya Chug, Northwestern News Network. You know, Naya, I've always wanted to go to a drag show. Have you ever been? I've never been to a drag show, but I am going to a drag brunch with my friends in the city this weekend, so I'm very excited for that. Oh, gosh. I'll let you know when the next one happens. I'll invite you. you yeah, let us with. know how it goes. Of course. That's all for tonight on NNX. I'm Aria Wozniak. And I'm Naya Reyes. Stay tuned for the Northwestern News Report. Have a good night.